pursuant to an order made on Monday, June 20th, 2022, there is an agreement between the parties to have some brief statements at this time. Je donne maintenant la parole à l'honorable député de Mégantic l'érable. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Chers collègues, c'est un très grand privilège pour moi de me lever pour partager avec vous quelques mots à propos de notre chef, la chef du Parti conservateur du Canada et la chef de l'opposition officielle. Et les premiers mots que je vais utiliser, M. le Président, ne sont pas les miens, mais ceux utilisés pour décrire la députée de portage Lisgar dans sa province natale, le Manitoba. And the first words that I will use are not my own, but those used by, to describe the member for portage Lisgar in her own province of Manitoba. The Winnipeg Free Press described her as, arguably, one of the hardest working MPs in Canada. Without a doubt, she's one of the hardest working MPs in Canada. That's exactly why the MP for Portage Lisgar successfully rose to the challenge of interim leader of the Conservative Party of Canada as a short leadership race began that will allow members to choose a new leader on September 10th. Candice, if you permit, Mr. Speaker, as everyone in our caucus calls her, has shown us that she is not only a hard worker, but that she is a woman of values, principle, who knows how to listen to others, and above all, who knows how to make decisions while respecting the differences of each other member of this team. Absolutely. <laughs> Si Candice a réussi à si bien intégrer les responsabilités de chef de l'opposition officielle, ça ne tient pas du hasard. Elle a acquis au fil des ans une expérience que peu d'entre nous de tous les côtés de la Chambre n'auront jamais la chance d'acquérir malgré nos talents et notre volonté. Candice a été élue députée de Portage Lisgar en 2008, après avoir milité pour le Parti conservateur pendant plusieurs années. C'est une femme de caractère, comme je l'ai mentionné plus tôt, ce qui l'a amenée à faire de la politique comme militante, ce sont entre autres les dépenses incontrôlées du gouvernement libéral de l'époque, M. le Président. C'est ironique comme l'histoire ne change pas. Elle a donc choisi de prendre le taureau par les cornes et elle est devenue la directrice de la campagne au leadership au Manitoba de celui qui allait devenir le premier ministre du Canada, le très déshonorable Stephen Harper. Elle ne voulait pas rester sur les lignes de touche. Elle avait en elle la volonté de servir les citoyens de son comté, tout comme les Canadiens. Comme je le disais, c'est en 2008 qu'elle a été élue avec une très forte majorité députée de portage Lisgur. Non seulement les citoyens de son comté et du Manitoba ont choisi une voie forte pour défendre leurs intérêts, mais les Canadiens ont rapidement appris à la, à la connaître et surtout à reconnaître en elle une femme qui a un amour illimité pour la grande famille canadienne. En 2011, elle est nommée secrétaire parlementaire du ministre de la Sécurité publique de l'époque, l'honorable Vic Toz. Dans son rôle de secrétaire parlementaire, elle a eu l'occasion de travailler aux côtés du ministre de la Sécurité publique, notamment sur le projet de loi gouvernementale C-19, la loi sur l'abolition du registre des armes d'épaule, qui est entrée en vigueur l'année suivante, Monsieur le Président, en 2012. En 2013, le très honorable Stephen Harper reconnaît le talent indéniable de la députée de Portage Lisgar et surtout sa grande compassion pour les Canadiens qui souffrent et qui avaient besoin d'une voix forte pour les représenter. Candice devient alors l'honorable député de Portage Lisgar et accède au cabinet en tant que ministre d'État au développement social. Pendant son mandat, elle a travaillé d'arrache-pied à améliorer les efforts du Canada pour lutter contre l'itinérance, en plus d'offrir un meilleur soutien aux personnes vivant avec un handicap. En 2016, Candice brise un premier plafond de verre au Parti conservateur du Canada en devenant, en septembre, la première femme de l'histoire du Parti à occuper le rôle de leader parlementaire. Rona Ambrose, chef des conservateurs, reconnaît en elle une femme forte, capable de prendre des décisions rapides, une femme d'équipe et qui saura organiser les travaux de l'opposition officielle pour s'assurer que la voix de tous les Canadiens continuera d'être entendue et relayée à la Chambre des communes. Monsieur le Président, il s'acquitte de sa tâche avec brio et les premières années du gouvernement libéral de l'époque n'ont pas été une longue marche tranquille, bien au contraire. Candice a su utiliser toutes les options parlementaires pour bien faire comprendre au gouvernement qu'il n'avait pas carte blanche pour faire de la Chambre un outil à sa disposition. Le nouveau chef du parti, l'honorable député de Regina Capel, reconnaît lui aussi la force et le talent de la députée de Portage Lisgar et lui demande de continuer de servir le pays comme leader parlementaire de l'opposition officielle. Et fort de toute cette expérience, Monsieur le Président, c'est sans surprise qu'elle devient 
chef adjoint du député de Durham, chef du Parti conservateur. Monsieur le Président, tous les chefs de notre parti sous lesquels elle a servi comme députée lui ont confié des mandats importants parce que c'est une femme de confiance. Puis en février 2022, le caucus conservateur reconnaît en elle une femme aussi rassembleuse. Une conservatrice dans l'âme et dans le cœur, Monsieur le Président, mais surtout quelqu'un qui saura mener la barque après une période pour le moins agitée, doit-on dire. Elle est élue par ses pairs, qui la voient travailler si fort depuis si longtemps, chef de l'opposition officielle. Monsieur le Président, n'allez cependant surtout pas la décrire comme une chef de passage, une chef intérimaire. Elle est la chef des conservateurs pour une période intérimaire. Jamais, au grand jamais, n'a-t-elle pris cette tâche pour acquise, Monsieur le Président. Dès le premier jour, dès le premier jour, elle s'est mise au travail pour accomplir le mandat qui lui avait été confié. Diriger les conservateurs pendant une course au leadership, offrir une opposition forte et unie au gouvernement libéral et être la voix de tous les Canadiens, sans exception. Au nom de tous mes collègues, Monsieur le Président, je peux dire sans me tromper qu'elle a réussi sur toute la ligne. Elle est vraiment la chef de tous les conservateurs et elle a réussi à nous faire oublier à tous le côté intérimaire de son mandat. Maintenant, Monsieur le Président, j'aimerais vous parler de Candice, la femme qui a su rallier les conservateurs dans les moments difficiles. Je dois avouer qu'avant de la côtoyer quotidiennement, parce qu'elle m'a offert le grand privilège de servir à ses côtés comme chef adjoint, je connaissais son talent de politicienne, ses compétences de parlementaire, mais pas vraiment les raisons de son succès. I myself have been in politics for almost 25 years, and I was intrigued by the path of my colleague from Manitoba. Today, I will share this secret, this secret with Canadians. The secret to the success of Candice, the MP for Portage Lisgar, the leader of the official opposition and the conservative, can be summed up in three words. Respect, values, and principles. <laughs> Candice is a woman of faith, the youngest of eight children. She grew up in a family with Mennonite roots. Étant la plus jeune de la famille, elle a sûrement dû très jeune à apprendre à écouter les autres. Ce que la famille lui a appris, elle l'a mise en pratique pendant toute sa vie, à la fois personnelle et professionnelle. Pour elle, chaque membre du caucus mérite d'être écouté et tous, tous les points de vue méritent d'être considérés. Je pense sincèrement, M. le Président, qu'elle considère le caucus comme sa famille. Elle comprend et accepte les différences, peut tolérer certains écarts de conduite, mais elle va tout faire pour que la famille reste toujours intacte. Là où des conflits peuvent éclater, elle va construire des ponts. Elle va pousser chaque député de son caucus à utiliser son talent pour le bien de l'équipe. Comme les valeurs familiales qui sont en elle, elle veut transmettre à chacun de nous les valeurs conservatrices qui nous unissent et qui font de nous ce que nous sommes. Elle ne pliera pas face au vent qui souffle, défendra bec et ongle ses principes et ses croyances, tout en reconnaissant, Monsieur le Président, et c'est sa grande qualité, que ses collègues, eux aussi, peuvent avoir des opinions différentes. Elle n'a pas peur de prendre une position, même si c'est parfois difficile, car elle le fait sur la base de ses convictions et ses valeurs. Elle va travailler à trouver le point qui rassemble plutôt que de chercher à avoir raison à tout prix. Comme membre de son équipe de direction, elle a exigé de nous la même ouverture, la même écoute pour nos collègues, et elle l'a fait avec une poigne de fer, Monsieur le Président. C'est une mère forte et fière qui veut le bien de chacun des membres de sa famille. Je crois sincèrement qu'elle considère chacun de nous comme un des membres de sa famille élargie. Et je crois parler au nom de tous mes collègues et des membres de notre parti en lui disant merci de nous accepter comme nous sommes. Avec nos défauts, certes, Monsieur le Président, on en a quelques-uns, mais surtout toutes nos belles qualités. Avant de conclure, je ne peux pas passer sous silence une partie importante de la vie de notre chef. Les valeurs familiales qui lui ont été transmises par ses parents, dont sa mère Anne, à qui elle rend visite régulièrement à Morden, sont les siennes et elle en est fière. Ses enfants sont vraisemblablement une grande source d'inspiration pour elle et ils vont toujours occuper la première place dans son cœur. Luke Delaney, qui est ici à Ottawa, et Parker, vous pouvez être drôlement fiers de votre maman. En tout cas, elle, elle est drôlement fière de vous. Et je ne crois pas... 
Et je ne crois pas que la maman Candice m'en voudra de dire qu'elle est aussi la fière grand-maman de deux petits-enfants, Arcadia et Lance, pour qui elle éprouve un grand amour. Et il y a évidemment, M. le Président, son amour, Michael, qui l'accompagne dans cette grande aventure politique, avec qui elle chante et joue de la musique pour se détendre et parfois, peut-être, se changer les idées des petites querelles qui surviennent au sein de notre famille politique. Merci, Michael, les enfants et les petits-enfants d'avoir accepté de partager le pianiste avec nous. Pour terminer, je crois que je me fais le porte-parole de tous les députés de cette Chambre pour reconnaître l'extraordinaire personne qui est la chef de l'opposition officielle. She is respected. She has devoted much of her life to public service, to defending the people of her riding of Portage Lisgar, and to wanting to improve the future of all Canadians. On behalf of, my, of all my fellow Conservatives, I want to say thank you to Candice for leading our party and caucus in a strong yet gentle way, showcasing everyone's strength and respecting everyone's opinion. Candice showed us that we can be proud of who we are. She gave us back the pride of being united as a team. She taught us the pride of being conservative in 2022. Elle nous a enseigné la fierté d'être conservateur en 2022. Monsieur le Président, la Chambre va bientôt se lever pour la saison estivale, mais je voudrais dire aux libéraux une chose. Candice est encore notre chef jusqu'au 10 septembre, alors ne comptez pas trop sur des petites vacances tranquilles d'ici la reprise des travaux cet automne. Merci, Candice, de nous avoir fait confiance. Thank you, Candice, for having trusted us et pour ton travail acharné pour le Parti conservateur du Canada. I now recognize the Honorable Member for Waterloo. Mr. Speaker, it is always a privilege for me to rise in this House to speak. And today it is on behalf of the governing benches and the Liberal Party about a woman who has my appreciation. I know that my colleague across the aisle was elected back in 2008 for the very first time, and she has served her riding of Portage Lisgar ever since. And it's actually not that long ago that the same member and her party occupied the seats on this side of the House. The member of Porge Lisgar served as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety and then went on to serve as Minister of State for Social Development. Then in August of 2016, I was honoured to be named as the first and to this day only woman to serve as Government House Leader. And nearly a month after, the member of Portage Lisgar was named the official opposition house leader, and as the member for Megan Tiklair Ab shared, the first conservative woman in this world, named by one of the many former opposition leaders in this house, the member for Regina Capel. I, for one, can't remember which sequential leader, interim or otherwise, he is, as since 2015 alone, the Conservative Party has gone through so many leaders. But I do know that he is one of many, as is my colleague and friend from Porges Lisgar. The most would not know, based on my deliberations or debate with her in this place or in the media, though our politics do not align, and though we often agree to disagree, and to be fair, Mr. Speaker, even our initials are opposite, but I digress. Mr. Speaker, all of our differences aside, I can say that she has served our country with conviction. I, for one, know that she respects this institution, because when two women were involved in running this house, the order paper was cleared at the end of the session. <laughs> I, for one, can say that I knew this member and her work before she took on the very esteemed role of the interim leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. While I believe that my colleague across the way rightfully was honoured by this responsibility and all the glitz and glamour that it comes with, I for one can say that I may not have been as eager to move into Stornoway as perhaps she was. Yet now that this experience, I would welcome her thoughts on any, any additional insights on public or government funded housing. Mr. Speaker, I cannot say I miss her as an adversary, as she was a formidable one. But I know that even despite our differences, 
I know that we will continue to work towards the same goal, that is, leaving this place and our country better off. I know that she has worked hard for her constituents, her family, including three children who never stop making her proud, and her two grandchildren, whom she loves unconditionally. From this side of the aisle, I know that Liberals look forward to seeing what comes next, and we know she will serve well in whatever she continues or takes on. To my colleague and friend opposite, I say thank you for your service to Canadians during your time as interim leader of the official opposition. We say thank you to your family for sharing your time and talents, and we wish you all the best in your endeavours. Keep well and safe. Thank you. Monsieur le Président, la députée de portage d'Isgar sera sans doute... Oups, pardon, j'ai commencé avec la deuxième page. Désolé. OK. Monsieur le Président, au nom du Bloc québécois, je souligne la dernière allocution de la députée de portage d'Isgar à titre de chef intérimaire du Parti conservateur. On peut croire que c'est un rôle délicat, voire parfois ingrat que d'assumer l'intérim d'un parti politique en pleine course à la direction. C'est un exercice qui exige certainement du tact, de l'équilibre, d'avancer prudemment afin d'éviter d'engager le parti dans des prises de position qui ne sont pas officielles, qui peuvent si vite changer, tout en maintenant la bonne humeur et la cohésion parmi les troupes. C'est d'autant plus difficile lorsque ces soucis ne sont aucunement partagés par les belligérants de la course à la chefferie, qui s'affrontent comme des adversaires farouches en faisant parfois fi des lendemains. La députée sera sans doute d'accord avec le grand Jacques Parizeau qui disait que la politique est un océan d'orteils sur lesquels il faut éviter de marcher. <rire> Saluons ses efforts pour naviguer sur cet océan pour le moins houleux. Monsieur le Président, la députée de portage Isgar a rempli son devoir en tant que chef intérimaire avec brio. Elle a tenu la barre de son parti durant la tempête, sans perdre de vue les priorités de la population manitobaine qui lui a accordé sa confiance. Elle a aujourd'hui droit, et nous le lui souhaitons, à un bel été. Nous avons hâte de la revoir dans de nouvelles fonctions parlementaires qui, sans le moindre doute, seront à la hauteur du dévouement dont elle a fait preuve. Salutations, Madame la chef de l'opposition, et à cet automne. Bravo. The Honorable Member for North Island Powell River. Well, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to rise in this House today to recognize the contributions of the member from Portage Lisgar. The Honourable Member's record is an enviable one. Elected in 2018, the Honourable Member was re-elected in 2011, 2015, 2019 and 2021. And she has also served in her time here in this place as the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, Minister of State, of, of for Social Development, Shadow Minister of Natural Resources, the Opposition House Leader, Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party, and of course now the Interim Leader of the Conservative Party and Leader of Opposition. It is a tremendous record, and I'm sure she is not done yet, Mr. Speaker. Of course, these important roles don't cover her many other contributions to this place. One only has to learn about her family life and her motivations in entering politics to understand her drive to contribute to this place. She was, has also been an effective defender of her constituents' interests. And while we fundamentally disagree on many issues, I have much respect for the opposition leader. This place and every other legislative body in this country has a long way to go before being truly representative of Canadian society. In fact, the 2021 election was a record year for female members of Parliament with 103 women elected to the 338-member House of Commons of Canada. And yet that's still just 30% in this chamber, 30%. But I do thank the member for her incredible work of showing leadership of what women in this place can do. 
So I hope that as a part of her ongoing legacy, she would encourage more women to run in her party. We all would like to see them here in this place, in every party in this chamber. It is my hope that with every election, this chamber becomes more representative of the communities we are elected to represent. I am sure that the honourable member will continue to contribute in this place, be it in a different capacity, and I would be remiss if I didn't also thank her family, two children, a spouse and three, three children and two grandchildren, sorry, for their capacity, because we know how much they give to allow us to be here to do this work. It is a type of work that does not give you a lot of time, and I know the many sacrifices she has made, but I also know her dedication and love for her family. We cannot do our jobs effectively if we don't have the people who love us standing with us. So I know that she respects and honours their contribution to her place here in this House. So on behalf of all New Democrats, we thank her and wish her all the very best in the future. I now recognize the Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Hi, I want to say a, like a, a high and affectionate hug to the Honourable Member for Portage Lisgar. And some in this place may be surprised by that, but I'll just go back and say that when I was first elected in 2011, I remember exactly the moment when I first hugged the Honourable Member for Portage Lisgar. And it was right after I'd done a we're all going away for Christmas now and we're preparing for the birth of our Lord. And uh, there was a very genuine um, affection between us that was immediate. Now, we don't have anything else in common. Uh, <laughs> no, we do. We have something else in common that I want to mention. I mean, I, 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 I also hugged her on another occasion. When oh, we hug a lot, um, when the Conservatives succeeded in passing a bill I didn't want to see passed, killing the long gun registry. But I ran over to say to the Honourable Member for Portage Lisker, congratulations. Because she, unlike so many in this place, did not go into politics because she'd been a career door knocker political nerd, wanting to someday be an MP. That career path is more like mine, caring about an issue, letting care about that issue bring you into politics to make a difference. And I know the Honourable Member for Porch Lisger how devastated she must have been back in the 40th Parliament when her private member's bill, C391, which would have gotten rid of the long gun registry, failed. And then it came back once they had a majority. There's there's something about commitment and persistence that resonates with people, whether you agree with the person, bring, the, the goal or not. I, I respect the persistence. I respect the integrity. And I respect the fact that the Honourable Member for Portage Lisker is here because she cared about an issue, not because she sought personal power. And I reflect on that with genuine care and affection and hope that someday she'll agree with me on climate change. Thank you very much. Anaya, I now recognize the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That was very, very nice. It's amazing how when we want to be kind in this place, we can be very kind. But just a little dig, varnish, I got that one. <laughs> but uh, no, that was really kind of everyone. And I, I do want to thank um, my deputy leader. I want to thank the leader of the Bloc Party. I want to thank the member uh, from um, North Island, Powell River, and the House leader for the, for the Green Party, and the member from Rock Waterloo for those very kind comments. Now, Elizabeth, we did hug another time that you don't remember. It was in the studios at CTV, and I think a pipeline had just been approved, so it must not have been under the Liberal government, but <laughs> a pipeline was approved, and Elizabeth came in, and she was devastated, and I mean, I was pretty happy, but she saw me, and she just, I need a hug. I can't believe this pipeline was approved. Do you remember that one? Yes, yeah, so we may have hugged another time, but um, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm very humbled, and I'm grateful for all of the kind words. Thank you for that. It's really been an honour of my 
my life, Mr. Speaker, to lead my Conservative colleagues and our party over the last several months. And it's not over yet. As the Deputy Leader said, I'm still the leader until September 10th. But I know this part of my leadership is coming to an end here in the House of Commons. It's been not only an honour, but I've really enjoyed it immensely. It's been incredible to work alongside each one of these amazing MPs around me to make decisions that we believe are the best decisions for the people of Canada and our party, and we've done that together, and I've really Thank enjoyed you. this. <laughs> the last several months have been very gratifying as I've, I've watched our caucus and our party heal some rifts and come together and be in probably one of the strongest positions that we've been in in a very, very long time, over 600,000 membership strong. So yeah. I'm going to say that. More, um, more. And as, I, as I've said to my caucus many times, we're not always uniform in our ideas and our perspectives, but we are genuinely unified in our goals. This caucus has been an incredible group to lead, and I want to say thank you to them for putting their faith in me. I wasn't expecting to be the leader of the party, and as you know, it all happened very fast, literally over the course of a few hours, and there was no recess or riding week to, to, uh, to get ready. So the House of Commons sat the next day, and I and the people around me stepped into our roles without missing a beat, or at least try not to miss a beat during a bit of a tumultuous time in our caucus, and actually in the country. It was a, a pretty difficult time in the country. And so I want to just take a moment, if I could, and say thank you to a few people who were especially helpful during that time. First of all, my WHIP House Leader and the leadership team around me who stepped into their roles and were just uh, amazing and so supportive, and they're very good friends. servant leaders. You know, we hear that term servant leadership. I would say these individuals around me have been true servant leaders to our caucus and I'm so grateful for what they've done. I also want to say big, a big thank you to three of my Hill office staff members, Neil McDonald and Kim Baker and Grace Galen, who were not hired to work for the leader of the Conservative Party, but when that happened overnight, they both, all three of them just stepped into these roles and were amazing, and I'm just so grateful. I know you sacrificed a lot, <laughs> did a lot, and thank you so much. Well, I'm Neil there, bud. Um, I also want to thank my riding staff, Deb Giblin and Colleen Kyle, who have not seen much of me in six months but they have kept things going very successfully in the riding, and I'm very grateful to them. Thank you as well to William Stairs, my Chief of Staff, and Nancy Hepner, my Director of Communications. William actually came out of retirement to, as he said, make sure the ship stayed afloat, and Nancy <laughs> left her family and her home in Saskatchewan to be here for the last six months, and that's a real sacrifice. So I'm very grateful for what they've done. I think as members of Parliament and leaders, we know we, we get the credit a lot, we're in the limelight, but it's, it's these people, it's our staff members who put up with a lot, work hard, and I want to make sure they get the credit today that they deserve. But I do want to say thank you to my family. Uh, my leadership came as a big surprise to my kids. They turned up, they're not watching Question Period or the news all, all day, every day. So February 2nd in the evening, I think they turned on the news and saw their mom and Grammy was the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. Um, my children have sacrificed a lot over the last 14 years, but I know that they would say they've gained a lot. Um, Luke, Delaney and Parker, you are the very best kids in the world. And I am so grateful for your love, your support. You're always proud of me, and you show that, and I, I love you very much. Thank you very, very much for being my kids. And a big thank you to my husband, my love, Michael, who has been a partner and my partner in this the, every step of the way. I know he has helped me. You've helped me be a better member of parliament and a better leader because of your wisdom and your sense of humor and your support. So thank you very, very much. So although I won't be leader after September 10th, I know I still have a lot of work to do as a leader within our caucus and within our party and our movement. And I'm looking forward to working with our new leader and conservatives around the country to do just that. Uh, as I close, um, as you know, and as uh, the member uh, Bartish mentioned, Michael and I did move into Stornoway, 
<laughs> and we will be there until the new leader is chosen. We have enjoyed being able to use it as a working house and a place for colleagues and others to gather and meet and talk about important issues facing our country. But you'll be interested to know that I'm still getting some mail coming to Stornoway addressed to past opposition leaders who lived there previously. Actually, I've gotten some mail for some of our previous leaders, and uh, I plan to give it, uh, give it to them the next time I see them. But if anyone on the Liberal side happens to know where Michael Ignatieff is these days, um, I, think, I think he may have won a prize in a lottery or something because I got a piece of mail for him. Or we can just wait till after the next election uh, when the, op the Liberals will be taking over Stornoway again. And maybe Michael Ignatieff will come back to visit and one of you can give him that piece of mail. Leave it on the desk. Leave it on the yes, desk. We'll leave it on the desk. Um, but all joking aside, um, again, thank you everyone for your kind words. Thanks for, it's been a fun six months. Uh, it's been an incre incredible session. Our work is not over. I know we will all finish strong because that's the kind of people that we are. I wish everyone here, all of the members of parliament, all of the support staff, you Mr. Speaker, we're getting ready to rise and go back to our ridings. I wish you all a wonderful summer as you head back and work for your constituents. God speed to everyone in the days ahead, and God bless Canada. Yeah. Yeah.